Good evening. Welcome to Delta Talk, Community Conversation Series, Preparing to Vote, Know Your Ballot. I am Jacqueline Tyson, President of the Rochester Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Our focus today is to educate, prepare, and mobilize the community to vote on November 3rd, 2020. Before we get started, I'd like to share a little history about our organization. Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated founded 107 years ago at Howard University is a nonpartisan organization of college educated women committed to public service with a primary focus on the black community. The Rochester alumni chapter chartered October 9th, 1965 serves greater Rochester with programs that reflect a five point programmatic thrust, including economic development, educational development, international awareness and involvement, physical and mental health, and political awareness and involvement. We sponsor social action activities that include voter registration, education, and mobilization. Thank you. Hello. I'm Dr. Donna Harris, Social Action Co-Chair. I would like to share important information to ensure that you are successful in casting your general election vote before or on November 3rd. Information provided during this session is focused on New York State. If you live in another municipality, please contact your local Board of Elections about all relevant deadlines and dates. During this election cycle, you must make sure that you understand voting procedures and meet designated deadlines. First slide, please. We strongly encourage all voters to verify their voter registration status and polling location before the November 3rd election at your lo local Board of Elections website. Many polling sites have changed as a result of COVID-19. In Monroe County, voter information can be found by visiting the Monroe County website at www.monroecounty.gov backslash etc backslash voter. You can call the Board of Elections at 585-753-1550 or you can email them at mcboe at monroecounty.gov. Next slide. There are several dates to follow if you plan to vote in the November 3rd general election. If you are not registered to vote, then you must submit a voter registration application by October 9th, 2020. The application can be obtained at the Board of Election in person or online or visit a local library. All registered voters in New York State should have already received an absentee ballot in the mail. If you have not received one, then you should contact your local Board of Election. All voters are eligible for an absentee ballot given Governor Cuomo's executive order issue in the spring. Once you receive the absentee ballot, you must follow the designated deadlines. If you return an absentee ballot application by mail, it must be postmarked no later than October 27, 2020. The application may also be returned in person at the Board of Elections no later than November 2nd, 2020. Completed absentee ballots must be postmarked by November 3rd, 2020, or they may be 
submitted in person by November 3rd, 2020. Once you receive an absentee ballot, next slide, there are four ways to return it. First, you can return it by mail. If you mail your ballot, it should be sent at least seven days before it is due on November 3rd. Second, you can take the absentee ballot and submit it in person at the Board of Elections. Third, you can submit it at any early voting site between October 24th and November 1st. Fourth, you can drop the ballot off at your election day polling location on November 3rd. Next slide. There are 12 early voting sites in Monroe County where you can cast your vote starting on October 24th through November 1st. The locations include the David Gant Community Center, Rochester Recreation Bureau, Genesee Valley Field House, Edgerton Recreation Center, SUNY Empire State College, Town of Child Eye Senior Center, North Greece Church of Christ, Marketplace Mall North Entrance, Arondacoy Public Library, the Harris Wheeling Park Lodge, the Parenton Square Mall, and the Webster Recreation Center. Next slide. The schedule for early voting varies between October 24th and November 1st. During Saturdays and Sundays of early voting, the polls will be open from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. On Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, they will be open 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. On Tuesday and Thursday during early voting, they will be open from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. On November 3rd, General Election Day, the polls will be open from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Next slide. It is important that each voter understand her or his ballot. All registered voters are able to download a copy of their ballot from the Monroe County Board of Election website or from a other county sites if you live outside of Monroe County. The website in Monroe County is https colon backslash backslash www.monroecounty.gov backslash etc backslash voter backslash. Let's talk about the ballot. My ballot has nine races, including the presidential race, state Supreme Court Justice, 7th Judicial District, the 25th Congressional District seat, state Senate, member of the state assembly, county court judge, surrogate court judge, county clerk, and city court judge. Please review each political race and understand who are the candidates running in each race. When you are ready to complete your ballot, mark the ballot using black or blue ink, carefully fill out ovals above the name of selected candidates. Any other mark or writing or any erasure made or marks outside of the voting boxes or blank spaces provided for write-in candidates may void the entire ballot. So please be careful. Next slide. In reviewing the sample ballot, 
we see that each column represents a specific race, starting from the left with the presidential race and followed by eight other races, ending with the city court judge. Please note that for the state Supreme Court justice race, we can vote for up to four candidates in all other races on this ballot, we vote for one candidate. Do not overvote. For example, you cannot vote for more than one candidate for the presidential vice presidential race. We hope that the information shared will help you easily navigate the voting process during the general election season. Please contact the Board of Election when questions arise. We need everyone to get out to vote and strongly encourage early voting. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Harris. That was great information. Good evening, everyone. I am Dr. Charmaine Cohen, and with me are my fellow members of the Delta Social Action Committee. Joining me for this phase of this segment are these outstanding women, Dr. Gail Harrison, Mrs. Dorset Watson, who is also the co-chairperson of the Social Action Committee, Ms. Jackie McClaney, Mrs. Carnithia Melson, and Ms. Tanya Dickerson. We will now have a discussion on voting in this upcoming election. It is our hope that we address some frequently asked questions that some of you may have. If you have a question that we did not address, please feel free to type it in the chat and we will try to answer it for you towards the end. Now let's get started. Some folks may be thinking that, hmm, my one vote doesn't count. Or they may be thinking, it won't even make a difference. I am going to ask Ms. Jacqueline McClaney to answer this next question. Could you please explain just how one vote does count in any election? If you can unmute yourself. There you go. <laughs> yes, I will explain. Okay. In a local election, the candidate wins uh, with the majority of votes. The presidential election is slightly different, uh, but every vote still, every single vote counts. There is the popular vote and the electoral vote. Mm -hmm. The candidate wins the presidency by having 270 or more electoral votes. The presidential candidate automatically wins the state electoral college vote if they get the majority of votes, which is the popular vote. For example, in New York, the candidate that gets the popular vote will receive 29 electoral college votes. Okay, thank you very much, understood. Now, that explanation helps us understand the power of one vote. Dr. Harrison, I'm sure there are members in our community who are wondering if the absentee ballot will be counted on election day. Will you please talk about the process and the timing around when the ballots will be counted? Certainly, thank you. The ballots will be counted. They will be counted after the election. Mm -hmm. So even though there are 16 other states that say, okay, we can count these absentee ballots as we go along, in New York, that's not the case. Okay. So 
when you submit your absentee ballot, it won't be counted until one to two days after the election. However, don't worry about that because that's when all the other ballots are going to be counted also. Okay, so what happens if the ballot does not make it to the Board of Election until the day of or the day after? Will it still be counted? If the absentee ballot has been postmarked by November 3rd, it can still be counted, but it has to be postmarked by November 3rd and it has to get there by November November the 1st. Mm -hmm. No, it has, I'm sorry. It has to get there no later than seven days afterwards. My mistake. So the point is that it can be postmarked by the 3rd because that's when the election is. And then you give a little time for the post office, but the post office saying, don't wait around for them. Make sure it gets in there because you only have up to seven days for the Board of Elections to receive it. Okay. Well, that's what you have to remember. So it really behooves everyone to get their absentee ballot in as soon as possible. And when we saw um, on one of the earlier slides that there are several ways to get you to make sure that your absentee ballot gets in. Okay, understood. So um, they have to get in by November 3rd. Mm -hmm. It'll still be counted even after seven days after the election. Right. Okay. Right. All right, that's good to know. And thank you for clarifying. All right, and again, if you have a question, please put it in the chat and we'll try to address it at towards the end. Next, I would like to talk about the early voting. But quickly, let me recap. We can vote in person. We can vote by absentee ballot. And we can also vote during the early voting. So I'm gonna ask, that Ms. Carnethia Melson, if you will please highlight some of the benefits of early voting and why should we even take advantage of this opportunity? Sure, Dr. Cohen. There are a number of benefits to early voting. Number one, you avoid the crowds and beat the rush. Mm -hmm. Since there are uh, less polling places, you could be waiting in lines for hours. Mm -hmm. So early voting eliminates that. Number two, anything could come up on election day and cause you not to make it to the polling site. So voting early allows you to get the vote in and be and counted on election day. Number three, it allows you to work around your own schedule. You vote on the day and the time that is convenient for you. Mm -hmm. And lastly, I wish I didn't have to say this, but if you die before you before election day, mm -hmm. your vote still may be counted depending on the state. So check with the Board of Elections in your county. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Now I would also like to add that early voting could give you a sense of accomplishment of just knowing you got it done, okay? So this next question may be a huge concern for some, voter protection. I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Dorset Watson, can you please shed some light on voter protection and how it safeguards us from some acts of voter suppression or incidents that might happen? Sure, Dr. Collin. We know that there are concerns about voter suppression. Mm -hmm. What can we do about this? Well, voter protection is a policy that is in place to protect the rights of the voter. For example, if the poll closes at 9 p.m. while you are still in line, stay mm -hmm. in line. You have the right to vote, so stay there. You are not to be turned away. Okay. If you make a mistake on your ballot, you have the right to ask for a new one. If the machines are down at your polling site, you can ask for a paper ballot. If the poll worker says your name is not on the list of registered voters and you know you are registered, you are entitled to a provisional ballot, even if you aren't in the poll book. 
Okay, so is the provisional ballot counted on election day? No. Mm. After, after election day, the election official must investigate whether you are qualified to vote and are registered. They will then count your provisional ballot if you are properly qualified. Okay, one more question for you. What recourse does a voter have if they experience some other suppression activities at the polling site that can't be addressed or fixed right away? What could they do? Individuals can call the election protection hotline. The number is 1-866-687-5050. Or for Spanish speakers, the number is 1-888-839-8692. People need to be aware that voter protection is available at all stages of the voting process, from registration to absentee and early voting, to casting a vote at the polls, to overcoming obstacles to voter partic participation. Okay, thank you. Thank you for assuring us that we have rights at the polling site and we are protected as citizens, voting citizens. Now, we have a few more minutes. Uh, Ms. Jackie McClaney, can you tell us if there are any questions in the chat at this time that have not been addressed? Well, we do have a couple of questions. One is due to COVID-19, Aren't they decreasing the number of voting sites? Absolutely. I'll answer this question and, and someone else can chime in if they like. Yes, due to COVID-19, a lot of polling sites have been decreased. That's why it's very important that you call now, today, ahead of time to find out where your voting site is, to verify that it is where you believe it is. Because you don't want to show up on the day of election to a site where it has been closed, okay? We don't want that to happen to you. So we have some time to find those things out. So again, call today to find out where your polling site is. I can Her also get some additional information for that. The, okay. uh, Board of, the Board of Elections has said that in Monroe County, they usually have about 300 about 300 polling sites, but because of COVID and because some polling sites were reluctant to open with, with um, that problem, they are now at 282 polling sites. So in mm -hmm. Monroe County, they are really trying. So th that's important to keep in mind, but you, we still need to get out there and vote early and make sure that we get it done. Absolutely. And one more thing to add to that, um, Dr. Harris showed us a slide of all of the early voting locations. Take advantage of that because they all have been listed. And you can contact, I believe, the Board of Election to find out where those early voting sites are as well. Okay, we can take another question. Okay, part two to that question uh, it, um, is, would you suggest doing uh, the absentee ballot? I'll start and again, someone else can chime in. The way you vote is a personal decision. Because we're in a season of COVID, most people feel or some people feel uncomfortable with that. And because that exists, we have a way to still vote to get our voice heard. And that is through the absentee ballot. Some may choose to do the early voting as uh, Ms. Carnethia Melson mentioned before, with their early voting, there are several benefits. Shorter lines, um, fewer people, and you can go at a time that works for you in your schedule. So again, that choice is up to you as an individual. So can I just jump in? I think um, given some of the discussions and the kind of national um, headlines mm -hmm. that those who are concerned about the post office and whether their vote, uh, their ballot will actually get um, to the Board of Elections. Some may uh, choose to use uh, early voting or going 
on election day to ensure that your once you cast the ballot, it's it's it, it's within the system. So no one has to check your ballot, verify your ballot. If you go to a voting site, your vote will be counted on the day that you cast it. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions in the chat? At this time, there's no other questions in the chat. Thank you. So would anyone like to bring up any other important information that you feel we need to share with the community? Just one last thing. On the absentee ballot, it does ask you to, to seal it and sign it. And so mm -hmm. you have to remember to sign it on the back because if you don't, then it can be considered not um, legally completed. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. All right. I have something, Dr. Cohn. Oh, yes. Go right ahead. I think that if the voters should know that voting polls must, they must be handicap accessible. Um, and they, they have, they can go, they have to have the ramps and other things so that those who are handicapped and the elderly are able to use the sites. The other thing is that counties covered by section 203 of the Voting Rights Act are required to provide bilingual assistance to voters okay. in specific languages. This means that they must provide poll workers who speak certain languages and make election materials and election related information available in different languages. Okay, thank you. So that's more information that relates to voter protection. I am sharing that. Thank you so much. Are there any more comments? Yes. So can I ask uh, um, Jackie McLean to help us understand how New York was assigned 90, 29 electoral um, college votes? Good question. Well, based on, um, based on people filling out their Census Bureau, mm. that is going to determine what um, each state is entitled to. So it's very important that you fill out your Census Bureau so that we have the right um, electoral votes and, um, and, and we're represented in the state. Very good. And I understand that the deadline has been extended for the census. Am I correct in saying that? I believe they have extended it back to the end of October. Um, we would have to verify that timing, but um, they have extended the date. Okay. So it's very important, people, to fill out the census survey. Um, I believe you can do it online and you can do it by paper. And I think there's also a way to do it if you call in. So let's get that census so that we can get the number of representatives for our state and we can have the appropriate amount of electoral college votes. And also that census helps us with funding for our communities. So let's please, ma'am, please, sir, let's complete the census. If you've done it already, please ask your family members. Thank you. Any other thoughts? This is Tanya. I just wanted to verify that the census ha deadline has been extended until October 31st. And you are correct. You can do it by mail. You can do it by phone. You can do it online. There are also census workers who are going around to different neighborhoods, and they are also helping individuals complete it. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for verifying that. And I believe there's a question in our chat regarding college students. What do we do about college students who happen to be away from home? How can they vote? And I'm going to give that question to Dr. Harrison. Well, I have a granddaughter mm -hmm. that um, is, at the, is at Albany. Mm -hmm. And so she is using the absentee ballot. Okay. She's using the absentee ballot. But for out of state, um, college students, they should get the absentee ballot also because they won't be able to, you know, so you have to really know where you're registered. Mm -hmm. So 
my granddaughter registered, you know, when she moved to Albany, but she's back here now. So that's one thing. So if nothing else, I would hope that all college students do vote. And if you don't know where you're supposed to vote, you make that call or you get online and find and go to the electoral board, the Monroe County Board of Elections, and you find out for sure because okay. there are some variations. So and you said there are, right, and um, the co-chair of social action, Ms. Dorset Watson, she may have some additional information too because I know she's been working on this. Ms. Watson, would you like to add to that? Okay. Well, I, I want to ask this question back to uh, Dr. Harrison. So you said your granddaughter, she's in the state of New York. So for those college students that are out of state, what do you recommend? Should they connect with their families in mailing them the absentee ballot to where they are, especially if they are registered here? What do you recommend? Would that be strategy to get there that's part of the strategy but when they registered when they read initially registered to vote there was a check there's a place that you check off that says that they want to do absentee ballot so that's mm -hmm. what they should have checked off when they first registered and then they can mail it in and okay. find out the deadlines will be given to them okay thank you any other thoughts or questions? Okay, well then this concludes this segment of Delta Talks. We'd like to thank you for tuning in with us. Please contact the Board of Elections for frequent updates and changes. And I'd like to close with this quote from the late Shirley Chisholm, who was the first African-American woman to run for president. She said this, the one thing you've got going is your one vote. And I'll say, cast your vote by November 3rd. Thank you for joining us.